a global business network. Entrepreneurs Organization is here in the Low Country, thanks to some local business owners, including Hey Barbarian and Brandon Poe. I sat down with the two owners for a special edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And listen to this interview later on iHeartRadio. Brandon Poe and Hey Barbarian, it's so great to meet you all. You too. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming. Anytime. Yeah, likewise. Likewise. Yes, sir. Uh, I know Ms. Jessica here from the, obviously the uh, Trio Solutions. She reached out to me a couple of months ago and she wanted to talk about this particular press release that was sent out recently. It says this, local business owners help bring global organization to Charleston. Simple question, why? Uh, any way you can uh, support the entrepreneurial community is probably a, a good thing and we were exposed for different reasons and different facets to EO, we each have our own story of how we got exposed to it, but we drank the Kool-Aid, <laughs> yeah. and here we are. Yeah, I think everybody has their own reason for joining EO, and uh, I had heard about it from somebody uh, in Texas that I knew, and it sounded like a pretty interesting organization, and it was a way to meet other business owners in the community and connect, and so that's kind of what attracted me to finding out about it. The more I learned, the more I liked the idea of it. And I know, Brandon, you obviously are the founder of the Poe Group Advisors, an international accounting brokerage firm. And of course, hey, you're the president of the Charleston based Specialty Food Solutions. Talk to me about your stories. Uh, I mean, I, I'm in the, in the perishable food industry, yeah. and I have been almost my entire life, never mind adult life, right. because my family was in it. And so, uh, all really on the meat side, so we call it the protein business. Yes. So, uh, you know, I've been in different facets of that sales, marketing, right. production, right. distribution, right. and um, that's the industry that I'm in. And I got exposed to EO through an industry friend of mine, actually from Connecticut, that is in the grocery side of that, oh, yeah. and he's been telling me about EO probably for 20 plus years. And so um, he gave me a call one day a while back and said they, they want to try launching a chapter, so on and so forth, what do you think? And that's how we ended up meeting. I did not know Brandon before this. Or even John. No. Or John. No. Or, or, or Jessica. Oh. Or you. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah for, for my uh, my business, uh, we specialize in accounting practice sure. only, uh, accounting practice sales, and I'm a CPA by profession, and I realized I really wanted something different than, than the monotony of doing tax returns, oh, yeah. and the, I shouldn't say monotony, but uh, I wanted something different, okay. and so we broker uh, deals all over the U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. So um, for me personally, I'm EO. So my children uh, started leaving the house, and I had a little time on my hands. Mm -hmm. And a bored entrepreneur is probably not a good thing. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to find ways to connect with other people in the community, and EO um, has been has definitely helped with that. Um, yeah, like Hank said. We didn't uh, know each other at all until that first um, that first EO meeting. So we we called EO and they set up a, a meeting. And a couple of people flew down from Alexandria, Virginia, okay. which I think is where they're based. Okay. And they told us about EO, and we met John, and it kind of that was where it all started. That's where it all started. And then uh, what? About two months later, we found ourselves in Toronto at a, at a very large function that they hold every year called GLC, Global Learning Conference, yeah. which this year was actually in China, in Macau. Oh, wow. And um, so, and next year it'll be in Cape Town, yeah. which I know speaking for myself, I plan on going yeah. next year. Yeah, you know, South Africa, they want a, want a chicken from the United States. Um, let me get back to EO, because obviously it's a global business that worked up more than 13,000 entrepreneurs in 179 chapters in 57 countries. It might be a tough question to ask, but out of those entrepreneurs, which one relates to you? 
out of the entrepreneurs. So 13,000? Um, it's not industry based for me. It's, it's that I can connect. I mean, we are in entirely different industries and I connect with these people because we're all part of the same tribe. We all, we all run into difficulties. We all talk about, uh, problems that we have. We also share our victories. We have a, a pretty deep understanding of where each other is coming from. And it's pretty special. Special. And I know that obviously it was founded in 1987 by a group of young entrepreneurs. EO enables, enables that is business owners to learn from each other through global events, leadership development programs, private form groups, and executive ed educational opportunities. Do we have any of those in Charleston in your mind? Well, we have, um, so yes, we have a lot of events, and one thing that's sort of central to EO yeah. is forum, mm. and forum meets once a month. Now, uh, the forum typically is six to eight people, mm. and you'll have people in different industries, and it's an opportunity monthly for a business owner to come, come in and sort of have a board of directors, mm. and you... Do, we do share um, a lot in the forum, and we don't solicit business with, with each other. That's not the point of this. The purpose of EO is to learn and to grow. And so that's the mission. That's the primary mission of EO everywhere. Now, as far as other events, um, we're, we've got two events um, almost under our belt. We've got one this coming Wednesday. Um, we have speakers from EO global speakers that come in to Charleston and we run events and they can be all sorts of different topics. Um, we had one was a sort of a coach came to speak with us. His name was Andy Bailey. He's out of Nashville and um, the event we have coming up is a marketing person. So we'll, we plan on having several events with all sorts of different topics and subject matter. And the people in EO Charleston, who joined the board, have the opportunity to go to GLC, which is the Global Leadership Conference, which Hay was talking about when right. we went to Toronto. Right. So, um, you, you know, if you want to get involved with EO on the local level, forum is your minimum responsibility. If you want to get into regional responsibilities, and even if you want to connect with the global community, you have that opportunity as well. What is the state of entrepreneurship in Charleston and Marquette? I actually think it's thriving. Okay. Um, I, I, I read a report just about a year ago that came out that um, contradicted that positivity and I spoke to the Post and Courier uh, about that and um, you know you've got other entrepreneurial groups in town, you've got uh, different industrial groups, you have uh, some uh, female groups, you've got different levels, you know, uh, some cater to startups and, and small to mid-range companies. EO has a minimum requirement of a million dollars in annual gross revenue. Um, and, you know, you, you have, the, there is a YPO in the Carolinas, which is uh, the young professionals, and so, and of course, they they're at a, a different level as well. So there's, I think, the entrepreneurial community here is thriving, but it can always be better. So that's part of what our mission is: is mm. to help make it better, um, to give people an opportunity to be part of whether it's our organization or just encourage them to be part of another one. Yeah. Oh yeah, and you talk about female, I cannot neglect Jessica Monday who's sitting here, because in November she became the chapter's first female member. When you think of that, where are you emotionally? Uh, well, we wish we had more female members. We love having Jessica in our group, and we're so glad that she joined. And uh, EO globally is really trying to encourage more diversity, and we feel like the more diversity of industry, the more uh, women, the more people of different experiences in general is only a benefit to EO and to the experience that we have here in Charleston. So we want people from all walks of life and 
um, more, the more variety, the better. The better. Hey, in five years, what do you want people to say about E.O. Charleston? That they're thrilled that they were part of the founding members circle, if they were. And if they weren't, that they were thrilled that they joined. And, and, and I hope that every one of us can be able to give the answer when we're asked the question that I asked when we were all at GLC. When we were there in April, we had only been in this for about two months. And the thing that was most impressive to me was it's a member-driven organization. Yes, there is an EO Global and there's paid staff, but it is a nonprofit. <clears throat> and it was impressive to me that there's so many members like us that are part of this, that are part of the educational side, that run these, these classes and these seminars. And I asked probably three different people at three different times during my trip in Toronto. And totally unrelated, every single one gave me the exact same answer to, why do you do this? Because, look, they have businesses. Some of them have multiple businesses. They have families, right. children, pets, vacations. It's tough. I mean, it's just, you know, time is right. quite the commodity. And so everyone gave me the same answer because I got so much out of the home. Um, I want to give back. So in five years, if myself and all of our other members get asked that question and they can give that answer, that would be very fulfilling to me. Brandon? Yeah, I have to agree that when we weren't, went to, to Toronto, we were exposed to long-term members of EO and the enthusiasm that was just palpable at that meeting from the members was really you know, really sort of um, interesting. It's like, what's, you know, what's, <laughs> why is there so much excitement around this organization and so much energy? Yeah. And people just genuinely have gotten a lot out of it mm -hmm. and have gotten a lot from it. And they, um, I think, they've contributed to others. And, um, I, you know, we're, we're a year, just over a year into it now. Right. And already we're starting to see some of those things that they were telling us about at GLC last year. So um, there's a you know there's a lot of excitement. So I hope people five years from now go, wow, that's a really exciting organization. Not only have they benefited the members, but the members have have thrived, which has a ripple effect throughout the community. Sure, that's so great to hear. Well, Brandon and Hay, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, you're welcome anytime. Yeah, thank you.